Hi YouTube, this is Darkon633 and today I'm bringing a review of the Transformers 2001 Robots in the Sky Sideburn. Now Sideburn is the third of week of my Robots in the Skies reviews and it's actually a pretty cool toy. It's actually my most favorite of the three Autobot brothers, although he can be the most problematic since he's got a lot of kibble pieces kind of all over him as you can already see just looking at him here right now. Now articulation wise his head does swivel which is nice and it can kind of bend around because it's on a ball joint but it doesn't have that much movement just the way that it's designed. His shoulders are on ball joints but as you can see that little piece does pop off quite a bit. His arms have some limited movement due to the large panels all around. It can swivel on the top of his arm and can bend at the elbow more than 90 degrees due to transformation but it doesn't have any wrist swivels. His other arm pretty much is very similar articulation although it's a little less restricted since the shoulder panel is on the back. Now his arms can fully swivel as normal and bend at the elbow as well. He does have waist articulation unlike Prowl and I think x Bron didn't have waist articulation. It's been a while since I fiddled with that figure so I don't remember but that's due to transformation as well. Be wary is that he does have these giant panels on the back though. So our legs are fully ball jointed, can bend more than 90 degrees, actually it can bend almost full due to transformation, and his feet can pivot quite a bit more than Prowl's. So that's pretty much it for articulation wise though. His transformation is where it gets very bizarre because what you're gonna do is first pull off the gun, I'm gonna lay on the ground for now. And you're going to eject the gun, missile should I say from the gun, since this actually will be stored in vehicle mode. You're going to take up the chrome pistol and then what you're going to do is open up this panel and here's where it gets kind of tricky since you're going to have to move a lot of parts just to get them out of the way. As you can see his head does get caught there too so you're going to pull this out and turn it so that the hand can face this direction then you're going to plug it in like this and turn this entire panel piece around so that it actually forms the back of the car. You're going to plug in the hand onto there you there. So once you get everything situated, it should plug into place like that. But anyways, there you have him. Well, very weird looking right now. You're going to move these out of the way so that they don't get in the way since this actually will come the front of the car. You're going to kind of play around with this panel here because it's actually going to bend inward and form the hood. Well not the hood but the roof of the car. But be wary here since you kind of need to play around with it in order to get it out of the way. Now before you transform it, you're going to actually store the pistol inside here since that is actually where it's stored. So if you happen to put him into vehicle already, you're going to have to open up the entire panel here just to hide the chrome pistol. And this pretty much is going to stay flat like this and you're actually going to see that in vehicle mode like that. But anyways, what you're going to do is just like with Prowl, these are actually going to come seats but they don't have that much good illusion on like Prowl. So we're just going to turn these around, push them down, and then there you go for most of his vehicle mode. I'm going to pull this over and it's actually going to plug into the chrome area there so as long as you get everything together, which we're now close off here, it should actually close into place but as stated earlier it can be quite tricky to play around with. So there you go. You're gonna plug these back here. So now you got him full transform there. The pieces do get kind of loose all over the place since he does have a quite loose vehicle mode unlike the other two solid connecting ones. And then to finish the transformation you're gonna to have to align everything properly so that everything gets to the place which can be a bit problematic when it comes to sideburns since as I mentioned earlier he's got a lot of flat thin pieces that 
don't allow you to situate everything. But once you do, you should fully attach together. This isn't the best round of transformation, but you pretty much get the idea here. Now what's cool is that his gun actually forms the bottom part of his vehicle mode, since it actually plugs in. You just close it off. There you have him fully transformed in his vehicle mode. Now what's cool about his vehicle mode is that you can actually store the missile underneath here via these two pegs. So now we're just going to quickly peg them together. There you go, you have Sideburn fully in his vehicle mode. Now, once again, he does have the rubber tires, and unlike Prowl, luckily it seems like the wheels fully hit the ground with no issue, and they're not stuck. So, I have to admit, this is a very nice toy, and I'm very impressed with his engineering. Now, the transfer back, it's a lot less complicated. You're going to open up the panel here, open up the doors here. Unplug the gun. Let's move the missile too. And then unplug everything from the back here and form the legs. So now you got him. It's kind of more like a puzzle than I know transformers tend to be more like puzzle kind of solving. But this one literally acts like a puzzle because you're just moving components away so the pistol too. And then you get them situated into specific areas. So yeah, it's pretty much more like a puzzle than anything else. Unplug the arm. Then you're gonna make sure that the rubber wheel goes inside here and closes it off. And you're going to pull this out and then it does a slight automorph gimmick. I'm going to plug that shoulder down. This side. You're going to turn these panels around, which could be a bit troublemaker at times. You're going to turn this entire arm around. It's going to plug into the little gap there, which you're going to turn. Fortunately, you're going to have to turn the waist in order to get this situated. And then you're going to turn, make sure that this panel actually lays backwards, like that. Once you get everything together, you'll have Sideburn back fully in his robot mode. As long as I get the ball joints into place, he should fully be transformed. So there you go. And then we're just going to give him back his weapons. So yeah, that's pretty much Sideburn in a nutshell, and unfortunately. It decided to go to autofocus for most of the reviews, so and bear with me here that I do not know what caused that, and since the camera is usually not like that. So we're just going to plug back in the weapons, and there's pretty much sideburn in a nutshell. Now I have to admit, while it is a bit complicated, he does have a lot of translucent parts, as you can see, all throughout the body. He is still quite fun to play around with, and while it can be a bit more troublesome than the other two Autobot brothers, I still think it's quite a fun toy to get a hold of. Now, be warned, since he does have quite a few pieces that can be lost, since the doors can be lost, and I've seen some with missing feet, I've also seen one with the missing weapon on the, the side here, and the chrome pistol, so unlike the other Autobot brothers, I, ha I can see why this is a little more expensive, since a lot of parts can be lost on the figure, since he actually has a lot more loose parts than the other two brothers. But anyways, I still think he's definitely worthwhile to pick up, and I really enjoyed getting Cyper after all these years, since I never was able to get a hold of this toy when I was a kid. But anyways, please comment and subscribe, and also check out Hirotaku for the latest in Hero News. Also check out the Gideon blog as well. Also, check out the channels down below, and don't forget to check out the WRW podcast in the YouTube link below. Also, check me on the Twitter under Dotcom633, and I'll see you on YouTube.